See, the battle is still continuing, we as uh, soldiers of God. God wants us to keep on replicating his heart and his desire to change the world. And he wants to use you and I. And I'm excited for all of you who are planning to come and visit us, uh, Lord willing, this coming June next year. Some of you will come and visit us there in the Philippines. But uh, life is a journey. And as I get older in the faith, uh, I found the Lord and, uh, there in the Philippines. I went to Bible college here and went back again. And uh, I just uh, walked this faith with the Lord, with this journey of faith. And uh, God wants us to do the battle his way. I mean, uh, it, it says in here in Matthew chapter 16, and it says in there, uh, when Jesus brought all the disciples sharing the word of God, sharing his kingdom, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he's the king, man. And uh, the Pharisees were challenging him. You see in there in verse 1 and 2. And uh, now he's asking the, the disciples, he's saying there in verse 13, whom do men say that I am? And the disciples answered, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say that you are Elijah. Some say that you are Jeremiah or one of the prophets, then Jesus Christ turned to them and said, but who say you that I am? Who, whom, whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter blurted out and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now based on that confession that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, he's the anointed one, he's the appointed one by God the Father, he's the salvation of the world. Based on that, you know, Verse 17 says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it, this, this confession. But my father wishes in heaven. But I say also to thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon this, this confession, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We need to realize we need to share this confession that Jesus Christ is the only answer. Amen. I mean, it's not, I mean, the, an economic solution is not the answer to this world. You can, you can pump a lot of money into an economy all you want to, but it's not going to change the heart of man. It's not a military solution where you impose the military and the government or, or the whole population. I mean, God's only solution is a spiritual solution. Amen. God wants to change man from within. God wants to change the heart. And the invitation needs to be shared. You and I are encouraged by God to fight this fight for the souls of men. And it says in there in 1 Timothy chapter 6, in verse 12 and 13, fight the good fight of faith. And then uh, grab a hold of eternal life. Understand that eternal life is what really matters. Our, our journey here in this world is just temporal. Our final destiny can be determined whether or not it's going to be heaven or hell. So our journey is to share this confession with people. We need to fight for this, and we need to fellowship with God with this. I mean, in the Philippians chapter 1 and verse 5, I mean, in the prayer of the apostle Paul is, I pray, I pray that you would grow from the first day until now in this fellowship of the gospel. We need to join the fellowship of the gospel. Share that journey with God. God is in the uh, captain's hold. I mean, he's holding the rudder. He's, uh, he's inviting us to join this journey of faith. And your life matters. I mean, history is his story. It's not our story. We're just joining the boat with him, amen? And he's to ride this fellowship of the gospel. Second of all, let's go back in here in, in verse 18. In uh, Matthew chapter 16, it says it there, and I say also to thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. It's a construction project. I will build my church. You are the church. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19 and 20. What know you not? That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God. God owns your body. God owns your mind. It's up to you to build that body. And in 2 Peter, 
in chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, meekness. But God wants us to keep on adding to that faith. And it's your responsibility. I mean, I cannot read my Bible. Well, I, can, I cannot read your Bible for you. Neither can you read my Bible for me. I mean, God wants us to grow as disciples. Amen. It says it there in John chapter 8 and verse 31. He said and told uh, the Jews which believe on him, he said, he says it says there, continue ye in my word, so shall you be my disciples. God wants us to continue growing, build your spirit up, build the sovereignty of God's kingdom by joining in the gospel of grace. I mean, by sharing the gospel of grace to this world, God wants to use you. He can, he can use you no matter what stage you're in. We, you've seen many of our older people getting saved. And then they, they share the gospel with other older people. The younger generation shares the gospel with the younger generation. The middle generation shares the gospel with the middle generation. God can use you in any stage of life that you're in. I got saved because of a shy guy that went door knocking there in the Philippines outside of Clark Air Force Base. It's an introvert, and I'm also an introvert. I mean, I would, even, I would not even imagine standing up in here at your church sharing the word of God. Even all my classmates, we had a big uh, reunion this past uh, July, uh, July of 2023. A big reunion of all my classmates in pre-med when I was studying pre-med at uh, La Salle, the La Salle University in Manila. We haven't seen each other for the last 40 years, and we had this great big reunion. And, Is that you? Is that you? Then uh, finally there at the dinner table, they told the mass, why did you become a preacher? You're our best in uh, surgery. We, we had surgery exams. I was the best student in surgery exams. I still have a steady hand. And they said, uh, why, why did you go to become a preacher? I said, God called me. I could actually hear the voice of God calling me into the ministry. I mean, it's, it's a journey of faith. Amen. Declare the sovereignty of God. I mean, when Jesus Christ uh, was baptized by John the Baptist, he shared, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. He is the king. He is the kingdom. And God wants to bring that kingdom to the hearts of people. It says in there in Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost dominating. I mean, having the kingdom inside your body, inside your mind, inside your heart. And he's sharing love, joy, peace, righteousness. He's sharing that life from, in, from, from within. Bringing out the kingdom of God in your life. And you share this kingdom journey with other people. God can break the walls. He can break the gates of, of hell. I mean, uh, we need to be the attacking force. The gates of hell are already there. The strongholds of the gates of hell are all over society. But they keep on breaking those gates. If they keep on attacking those gates, they're just stationary. You are the ones who are mobile. You are the ones in this journey of faith, attacking the gates of hell. Sure, we'll fall. Sure, we'll falter. Sure, we'll be injured and wounded. But God still has that rescue. I mean, if we confess our, our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God wants us to keep this journey going. And then you see in there in verse 16 and again, again, let's go back in there. In verse 18, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 and 19, it says, And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. God, God begins... 
your building of rewards in heaven by your involvement in the local church. I mean, being baptized into the local church is very important. I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, bind in the church, bind in the local church, shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever shall be loose on earth, if you're not involved in the local church, I mean, uh, you don't have rewards to put, to put at the feet of Jesus Christ. You'll be going to heaven, but there's no rewards. I mean, the Bible says in there, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 10 and 11, the four and 20 elders fall down before the throne and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. God wants us to lay our crowns at the feet of Christ. We won't wear those crowns. We'll put those crowns at the feet of Christ. The judgment, is, the judgment seat of Christ is coming. Our, our goal is to attack the, the gates of hell. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18 to 20, all power is given unto me. That's exousia. All the power of the universe is given unto you. It's not just a dynamo. It's not a dynamite only in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. He's talking about exousia, the, 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 the vast energies of the universe is given to you as long as you go. Go ye therefore into all nations, teaching them to observe all things. Go ye therefore and teach them. The gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always. We're not just starting an orphanage. We still have a Bible school. We still have four men from our church. They're our fledgling church. Our church has just been going for the last uh, five years. We're going into our sixth year this coming July. But we already have four men in, in our Bible Institute. And our Bible Institute is there at Calvary Baptist Church, my former church. And we have a total of 12 men and then two ladies all together. We're still teaching them to grow in, in their call, in the ministry. God wants us to replicate ourselves. I mean, the, the fruit of a Christian is another Christian. The fruit of a church is another church. And we've sent out many men already since I've been teaching in Bible Institutes. I've been teaching there at uh, Hillcrest Baptist Church, my first pastorate from 1995 until 1998. We started uh, 12 different churches from our Bible Institute when I was there. Then there at Calvary Baptist Church, we started another uh, 10 different churches. See, God wants us to keep on replicating the gospel, amen, and keep on replicating ourselves in other preachers, in other ministers of the gospel. One day you will be God. I mean, the mark of a successful work is having a successor for that work. I mean, Moses and his journey across the Red Sea was not capitulated until Joshua brought them across the river Jordan. He had a successor. The mark of a successful ministry is training your successors to lead even without you. Amen? Even when I'm not there right now, I have many men working together in our ministries together in the gospel. I mean, the journey must continue even without you. His story must continue. God's story is you joining him in the story of faith. Join the fellowship of the gospel. Keep on attacking. Keep on attracting people to Jesus Christ. And there's a wonderful verse in Jude. In Jude, it has only one chapter. But look at there, Jude, in verse 22 and 23. I mean, this is very profound. But look at this. In some Verse 22, and some have compassion, making a difference. There are two ways you can express the journey of love. 
with Jesus Christ. Share the compassion of God. Splagnitsumai, entering in. Enter with them, understand where they are. Understand how they're feeling. But, because that's where you used to be, amen? Join the passion, the, the pains, the sufferings, the agonizings of these people. Join with them. Then make a difference with them. We, we bring in, I mean, the past pandemic, we brought groceries to people because people were in lockdown. I mean, the, the, the city government can only give so much. They can only give two cans of sardines and then just two, uh, two kilos of rice for a whole week. I mean, that's, that's not enough. I mean, there's no jobs available. Nobody was allowed to move. In our communities there, so we had to reach out. Man, we had to bring these bags of groceries to people. I mean, all of them, uh, to this day, they're still, they're still uh, having a facade of uh, uh, apathy or indifference. But I still wave at them. I mean, still say hello to them. And sometimes this journey of compassion will take time. I bring uh, medical missions to the medical missions team there at uh, Brother Edmondson. They go there almost every year, and they've been there since 2016. I mean, it's just been a, uh, a journey with the Lord with them, and so many, so many souls get saved. And we also have uh, dental teams that come in and optical teams sharing glasses to, to those who are uh, getting a bad eyesight. We need to make it attractive to them, share the compassion of God, and then share the gospel. In verse 23, it says, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Still share the love of God that way, in compassion and also in sharing the fear of God. I mean, uh, God's, God's holiness is still the underlining matter. I mean, God, God is the God of justice. At the same time, it's a God of love. We still need to be balanced in sharing the, the love of God at the same time, the holiness of God. Amen? So that people will understand their need for the Savior. We need to articulate the gospel to them. The Bible says in the first Peter, in first Peter in chapter three and verse fifteen, in verse fourteen, it's talking about uh Sometimes you go through sufferings, amen? And it says here there in verse 14, but and if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. I mean, sometimes people become uh, very belligerent in responding to the gospel. You can't blame them. That's where I used to be, amen? I didn't want the gospel. I didn't want uh, the gospel because I, I was hiding in the smoke screen of my religiosity, I mean, all the religiosity of what I was doing in my uh, confessions on the last Friday of the month and then receiving the Eucharist on the Sunday and then living like the devil again for the rest of the month. I mean, and then coming back again on the last Friday of the month. I mean, it's just a big smoke screen. I'm probably playing the game of religion. I didn't want the gospel. I didn't want the holiness of God. But sometimes it will take time to share. We need to articulate the heart of God. It says in there in verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You still have to be meek with them. Amen? Be humble with them. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12 and verse or Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Wear that yoke with God. I mean, the, the double oxen, the agricultural methods there in the Far East. Man, you, you need to have two yokes, I mean, two oxen pulling that yoke so that they can pull the harrow and plow the ground. Amen. And God wants you to, to join with him. He's that veteran cow Join with him to break the, the hard hearts of people. It might take a whole lifetime, amen? When I had the book of George Mueller. George Mueller prayed for his neighbor for 35 years. And when his neighbor retired from the U.S., coming back to Liverpool, England, 
He asked him, have you been a Christian yet? And he said, yes, just last week. For 35 years, he's been praying for his neighbor. Sometimes a journey would take that long, but God wants you to take that yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest for your soul. We need to still present the gospel of 